Hello everybody. We shall end our discussion today with the last topic in Lagrangian mechanics. This is something which has a lot of names. Okay. The name usually we say doesn't matter, but uh, I just want to put the names because each name has a meaning. And I will tell you some of them at least. So what is it? Well, this we have talked about, we have talked about canonical momentum. So what is the canonical momentum corresponding to each coordinate qi The corresponding canonical moment of pi is defined as del l del q i dot. So that we have talked about. Right. Now, remember what Lagrangian is a function of. Lagrangian is a function of n q i's. N q i dots and time. Right. And we said that it is not necessary that Lagrangian has to be written in terms of the uh, generalized coordinates all the time. It can be written in the Hamilton's principle or the destruction principle. It is formulated in such a way that it can be written in terms of any variables. Now it may it may be it may be that L doesn't depend on explicitly depend on the kth coordinate. In a particular case, particular choice of Lagrangian and coordinates, this may happen. This may even happen if so. This may even happen for uh, when the number of degrees of freedom. So you are working with generalized coordinates also. So we'll come to the examples of that. So what happens if this is? So this this essentially means the mathematical statement for that is del l del q k equals zero. But you see that your Euler-Lagrange equation, so Euler-Lagrange equation tells you along the trajectory, DDT of del L del Q K dot is equals del L del Q K. Which is equals to zero if it doesn't depend on the kth coordinate, Lagrangian doesn't depend on the kth coordinate, which means that DDT of del L del Q K is zero, del L del Q K dot, sorry, del L del Q K dot is nothing but P K dot, so this implies pk is a constant of motion, constant along the trajectory. Okay. So such coordinates are called absent cyclic ignorable or velocity coordinates. Kiosthenic essentially means velocity. Why it is called absent coordinate? Probably you have already understood that that coordinate is absent in the expression of the Lagrangian. That's why it's absent coordinate. I'll not tell you why it is called cyclic coordinate. So you can try to figure it out. Uh, if you figure it out, then you will understand part of how you integrate uh, the, the Euler-Lagrange equations. But uh, let me not tell you why 
to this right click here right now as i said i'll tell you part of the answers now if pk is a constant and say that constant is called some c or ck then uh, that gives me a, a differential equation that gives me a differential equation which is only first order how well remember that l has a kinetic term which depends on qk dot square or you can have like qk qj type of terms qk dot qj dot but it depends on velocity square well obviously if you are writing in arbitrary coordinate system there will be uh, the metric sitting at these places but i am not i'm just trying to make the point that it is still have velocity square the kinetic terms okay so if l has this then del l del qk dot is linear in velocity linear in qk dot i should not say velocity because it's not velocity it's a linear in qk dot which means which is nothing but that is pk so which means that qk dot is a first order differential so i will get something times qk dot or something times qj dot so that type of equals ck so this is only first order So the for the cyclic coordinates, the differential equation to I have to solve for the trajectory of that coordinate. I don't need to solve the Euler-Lagrange equation, which is a second-order differential equation, but I can solve a first-order equation for the cyclic coordinate, and that will give me the trajectory for that coordinate or the how that coordinate changes with time. That's why it's called ignorable because you can ignore one of the dimension. And you can see now again also why it is called velocity because you are just solving that velocity equation instead of a quote unquote acceleration equation, which is the Euler Lagrange equation. Is the Euler Lagrange equation is like the rate of change of acceleration or rate of change of momentum, DDT of the canonical momentum. This must be the force if you compare it with Newton's law, Taylor Lagrange. Okay, okay, so this is what is we mean by cyclic coordinate so if there is a coordinate which is absent in the lagrangian corresponding to that coordinate you have a canonical momentum that is conserved so that coordinate is called a cyclic coordinate okay now it may seem to you that uh, let me have a system it may seem that i have a system and then i have certain uh, constant forces so it can reduce some coordinates but I was lazy. I wrote down the Lagrangian in a coordinate system which does not take care of the constraint forces. Because of that, I am getting back the cyclic coordinates. But that is not true because of this following statement. Let me make the statement and then explain to you why uh, that the previous consideration is not too true. Okay. So I mean to say right now that the cyclic coordinates not necessarily reduce the degrees of freedom of the system. Okay, for example, so one, let me give you a concrete example, a very simple example, free particle. So, single free particle, one free particle. What is the Lagrangian? Lagrangian is just half m x dot square. If m is the mass of that particle, I have only one 
so amphem x dot square if you wish y dot square plus z dot square right and that's all the lagrangian has because there is it's a free particle there is no potential this free particle is absolutely free to move in any direction but you still see that l doesn't depend on x y or z so all x y z cyclic And this implies that Px, Py, and Pz constant. Uh, that we already know that's Newton's laws tells you that Newton's second law tells you that that should be the case because it's a free particle, no force acting on it, its momentum should not change. Rate of change of momentum is zero, no force is acting on it. Right? And we will look at the example of. Uh, the central force and you will see that there are several things which are constant and for some of them you can figure out a cyclic coordinate also which just comes out as the solution of the problem the particle may or may not be restricted to move in all the directions if it is restricted then you reduce it degrees of freedom but in this case, you can see the free particle is absolutely free to move in all direction. So degrees of freedom in this particular case is still three, but you have three coordinates which are cyclic. Okay, so now if I have a cyclic coordinate, so let me So let me discuss this thing called Routes prescription, which is to reduce, to find a reduced Lagrangian when you have cyclic coordinates. And this will explain with an example. The example is one particle. Three dimensional motion. One cyclic coordinate. So I call these coordinates as x1, x2, x3. And the cyclic one is x3 okay so what do you want to do so let us say that the lagrangian uh, so this is i'm writing down the lagrangian in the most general form possible okay so i will have the g's and then i will have x1 dot oh, sorry xi xj square okay we assume that the mass of the particle is 1 or it is in, already included in G. This is the kinetic energy term and the potential energy term it can depend on all x1 this quantities. It cannot depend on x3 because that is like So remember what are these? So these are I have a summation over i, I also have a summation over j. So g i j x1 dot square, uh, I'm sorry, so these, these should not have the squares. And the square is the multiplication of these two. So I can have g i j x1 dot square, x2 dot square, then x1, x2, all these type of terms. Okay. Now, what is g i j function of? Well, 
because the Lagrangian is cyclic, Gij can only be a function of x1 and x2. It cannot be a function of x3. Remember that it, it is function of the coordinates, so it can be function of x1 and x2. So what is this? So this is the setup. First thing is identify the cyclic coordinate. So now I am coming to the prescription. Okay. So in this case it is x3. Calculate the momentum. Which obviously we'll call P3 corresponds to S3. So now, now what will be P3? Remember that this let me write a few terms here. So this is G11 X1 X2 X1 dot square plus etc. Right. So then I can have terms like G13 X1 X2 X1 dot X3 dot etc so if you calculate p3 then uh, so there will be a x3 dot square term so which will give me g33 x3 dot and there will be terms which 1 and 3 which will give you x1 dot and so please work this out by yourself once so you'll get these terms and this is again we are working in a general case we will work this for the central force problem central force problem is a classic example where all these things come together so we'll once we go through it we'll work out everything so the prescription says that then solve so this should be a constant right let's call it c3 so then you solve for x3 dot in terms of So x3 dot in this particular case will just become c3 minus g13 x1 dot minus g23 x2 dot divided by g33 right so you may ask the question what happens if g33 is zero okay so think about it what happens if g33 is zero So I solve for x3 dot. Now what do I do? Now this is the step where the, this is something that you do have done many times uh, if you have worked with Lagrangian mechanics before and this is the step where everything get it wrong. So what people do at this stage and you should not do is replace this x3 dot in the original Lagrangian. So the original Lagrangian wherever I have x3 dot they replace that x3 dot with this that is wrong. So what you are supposed to do is this, which is, this is the reduced Lagrangian. This is the one that you want to find out. And now this is a function of, uh, that is the important thing. This is a function of x1, x2, x1 dot, x2 dot. There is no x3 dot in this. Okay. And that's why it is reduced so l minus now this is the crucial thing c3 x3 dot so i define l bar this way now i will not do the replacement because it will take quite some time to work it out so what i will do is i have the solution here and i will write down the final form of the solution again it will be your homework to work it out so this can be written in terms of half of g11 prime x1 dot square plus g22 prime x2 dot square plus 2 g12 prime x1 dot x2 dot you see that this is my enter kinetic term which doesn't have any x3 dot term 
and then minus I will get an effective potential just like the reduced Lagrangian. This will be a function of x1, x2, x1 dot and x2 dot. Okay, so I don't want to write this v bar explicitly for you because uh, that will actually, that's a little bit uh, complicated expression, but you should work it out and see what you get. And this g11 primes, etc. So I, let me just write one of them. So this is g11 minus g31 square by g33 okay uh, let me write g12 prime because that we will discuss a little bit is g12 minus g23 g31 by g33 okay so there is no Arm in writing down the only thing which is remaining and that you can figure out what is just looking at here so this is g11 this is also 11 one with prime the other with not prime and then why what i have written here is three with one so here i will write two with one and then g33 The reason I wrote all this down, uh, these three expression, is there is this. So this is this is essentially the uh, this is essentially is the Routes prescription, and what it does is it not not only changes the kinetic term, it also introduces an effective potential, and that potential can uh, now include x1 dot and x2 dot, even if it was not there originally. Okay. So once you calculate v bars, you will understand that. Now there is a special case which we can think of when in the original one. So all the cross terms. See, uh, I not only have like x1 dot square, x2 dot square, x3 dot square here. I also have these terms in general x1 dot, x3 dot. So if those terms are absent, which means that all g i j for i not equals to j are zero which makes g 1 2 g 3 1 and g 2 3 all zero then you see this term goes away this term goes away and both of this term goes away then i just have g 1 1 prime is same as g 1 1 g 2 2 prime is same as g 2 2 and not only that if plus so this is a requirement on top of what we have already discussed g i j for i not equals to j equals to zero if original velocity is oh, sorry original potential is velocity independent then the final potential v bar is also velocity independent okay why do i come to this last point because this will be the case for the central force okay thank you